good morning to one and all uh, i'm dr priyanka and uh, yeah today's like so coming to the learning outcome we have uh, five learning outcomes so we're going to discuss the advantage disadvantages of an all ceramic crown um step by step preparation of a ceramic interior crown um some common errors which we see in the preparation of the all ceramic crown um, and of course, how do we apply the principles of tooth preparation for all ceramic crown? Uh, uh, so this we have already taken up in our principles of tooth preparation, right? Uh, the last one is select patients for all ceramic crowns. So we're basically talking about the indication and the not indications. Okay. So introducing the topic to you is, um, the most aesthetically pleasing prosthodontic restoration is an all ceramic crown, veneer, inlay or onlay, right? So the all ceramic restoration is um, the most acclaimed, if I may say, yeah. So because there is no metal to block light transmission, it resembles natural teeth structure and it has an amazing color and translucency right compared to any other situation coming to the advantages it has superior aesthetics it has ex excellent translucency and it is generally it has a good tissue response um also it lacks the reinforcement of metals so, um, structure it enables slightly more conservative reduction of the facial surface rather than the other preparations guys okay so basically um it still provides strength to the tooth the appearance of the completed restoration can be influenced and modified by um, selecting different colors of looting agent, right? So, especially done in the veneer space. Disadvantage is that um, complete ceramic crown include reduced strength of restoration because of the absence of reinforcing metal substructure. So, again, it's it, it's both ways, guys. Because it has a, a proper tooth structure remaining, it'll give you strength. But as it doesn't have any reinforcement, sometimes it will fracture off, guys. Yeah, it is brittle, basically. Yeah. So because of the need for shoulder type margin circumferentially, significant tooth reduction is necessary for the proximal and the lingual aspect. Yeah. Right. So you have to reduce a lot. One mm reduction. Yeah. All over the margin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there, porcelain is porcelain brittleness when combined with the lack of reinforcing substructure, right? So when it is reinforced by a metal, it would give you better strength. Yeah. Okay. Thus, by comparison, the proximal and lingual reduction are less conservative than those of a metal ceramic crown. Okay. Um, it has an unforgiving nature as if inadequate tooth preparation is done, it would fracture. Uh, proper preparation design is critical to ensure mechanical success. Um, tooth preparation principle, guys. Yeah. So a 90 degree cable surface angle is needed to prevent any unfavorable distribution of stresses and the risk of fracture. We'll be showing you a photo in the next slide. The preparation should provide support for the porcelain along its entire incisal edge unless a ceramic system that includes a high strength core is chosen okay all ceramic restoration is not effective as a retainer for a fixed dental process okay act as a retainer guys it'll fracture off okay so in short this is the interior reduction prep one mm one mm shoulder shoulder 1.5 to 2 mm to be on a safer side guys okay sloped shoulder sloping shoulder at a slope angle is not recommended here there will be a fracture when the forces are applied guys okay uh, this is recommended okay right so 
it will distribute the forces evenly. So sorry about that. Tux cut off. Yeah. Okay. The brittle nature of porcelain necessitates that connectors are of large cross-sectional dimension be incorporated in the fixed dental processes design. Okay. This typically leads to um, impingement on the interdental papilla by the connector, which increases the potential of periodontal failure. Right. Um, so we have to be very careful of the gingival tissues. Uh, Ware has observed on the functional surface of the natural teeth that opposed the porcelain restoration. Yeah, it would probably abrade, guys. Yeah, so that's something we have to take care of. Indications is it's indicated in high aesthetic requirements where more conservative restoration would be inadequate. Okay, so usually such a tooth has proximal or facial caries that has no longer be effective restored with the composite resin. So where other restorations don't work, this works. The tooth should be relatively intact with sufficient coronal surface to support the restoration, particularly in the incisal areas. Where it is important not to exceed a maximum porcelain thickness of 2 mm. Otherwise, failure of the brittle material will occur, right? So you cannot repair anything, guys, okay? So in the A, you can see inadequate fitting of all ceramic that led to recurrent caries, guys, here, 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 yeah? Um, in the B, you can see that the gingival defect was corrected by minor periodontal recontouring, right? So they did some recontouring and yeah, that's how they corrected it, right? The teeth was re-prepared and all, all new all ceramic crowns were provided. So do you see the difference between picture A and picture B? Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. The design of the occlusal, occlusion of all ceramic, guys, okay? To avoid fracture, it should have enough clearance, guys, right? Okay, centric contacts are best confined to the middle third of the lingual surface. Interior guys should be smooth, right? So the gliding of the tooth should be smooth, guys, okay? It should basically be here and not here. Get it? So if it's here, it's edge to edge, it will keep fracturing off, guys, okay? Um, yeah. It will fracture of the adjacent teeth. So in short, proper clearance, proper rigid and overbite should be there. Um, because of the relative weakness of the restoration, the occlusal load should be favorably distributed. Okay? So if it's favorably distributed, um, it will the, the restoration will last longer and not weaker, weaken. In general, this means that the centric contacts must be in the area where the porcelain is supported by tooth structure. Yeah, we just okay. Contraindicated, it's indicated when more conservative restoration can be used, such as probably a composite veneer or a PFM or something like that. Yeah? Because this reduces a lot, guys. Yeah. Rarely it is recommended for molar teeth because of the increased occlusal load and the reduced aesthetic demand okay so metal ceramic restoration is the treatment of choice basically if you really want to take care of the molars if you have one molar or something it's still okay if occlusal loading is unfavorable or if it is not possible to provide adequate support or an even shoulder width of one mm circumferentially then a metal ceramic restoration should be done instead okay and this is an unfavorable occlusion loading example which is edge to edge right which is contraindicated guys yeah in any parafunctional habit patients it's going to fracture of the teeth surface so in such patients you should just give a um, um you should just probably give a uh, sorry and Okay, preparation of the armamentarium, you can see the burrs here. Okay, so these are narrow, round, tipped, tapered, diamond, regular, and coarse grids. Okay, square, tip, uh, tapered, diamond, regular grid. Okay, so you can see uh, these are all types. Um, these are tapered fissure, these are um, 
football shape, these are round burrs, these are flame shaped, right? Yeah, there. Okay. Finishing stones, carvice, mug, mirror, probe, explorer, chisel, hatchet, high and low, low speed hand pieces. So we usually do use only high speed. Okay. So step by step preparation, guys. I have not really put photos for these step by step preparation. It's it's really basic, guys. Yeah. So the preparation sequence of an old ceramic is similar to metal ceramic round. The principal difference is the one mm wide chamfer circumferentially or shoulder. Okay, chamfer or shoulder can be given, guys. Okay, all right. Um, incisal occlusal reduction, guys. So one point five to two mm clearance has to be given. That's why right. I I always tell you two mm. I never say one point five, guys. Okay, to be on the safer side. This enables the fabrication of cos cosmetically pleasing restoration with adequate strength. Um, if the restoration is used for posterior teeth, which is rare, then again, 2mm clearance should be given in all guys, okay? So you can see the rounded line angles. Um, everything is rounded, guys, right? And you can see 1mm wide shoulder and very anatomically prepared teeth, okay? Labial view. Um lingual view right okay all right you can see that this is the margin guys one mm okay that is not the margin that's not the margin right so everything has to be equal distributed okay place three depth groups same as in the inside the ledge keeping around 1.3 mm depth um then just merge all the grooves right right you can uh put one groove on the middle to the gingival third and the other groove on the Right? Okay. Coming through facial preparation after placing the groups, we have to reduce the facial on the buckle surface. Um, right? And 1 mm clearance, 1 mm thick, 1 mm of porcelain thickness clearance should exist. Okay? So the grooves and the depth, the, the depth of the groove is placed again on the same surface I already discussed, guys. Okay? So, um, in short, you just have to reduce properly, guys. Okay? More the reduction properly in two planes um accomplish the bulk reduction with the round tipped tapered diamond right you can also give a heavy, heavy chamfer chamfer or uh, shoulder right be sure to maintain proper irrigation of course right lingual reduction you can use a football shaped diamond bird don't want to use it don't use it it reduces too much so 0 0.8 mm Depth can be given. There has to be a clearance of one mm in all mandible excursion movements, guys. Okay, so these are the excursion movements. You see it, guys? Yeah. Right. So I'm moving my. Um, I, if a person moves the jaw left and right and front and back, there should be easy gliding, guys. Okay. So it should be able to bear proper load. Right. Okay. After the selected path of placement has been transferred from the cervical wall of the facial preparation, place the depth groove in the middle of the cingulum wall, right? So repeat the shoulder preparation this time from the center of the cingulum wall into the proximal aspect, okay? So until the lingual shoulder meets the facial shoulder, the margin should follow the free gingival crest, okay? So like I always tell you, uh, follow the gingival contour guys, right? It should not extend sub gingivally. Okay, finishing has to be done with the finishing burrs guys All the line angles have to be rounded off to prevent any fracture Perform any additional margin refinement if required um, Use the burr of your choice guys. Okay. All right, okay so Here we can see all ceramic crown preparation Um yeah, so you do see the indication where high aesthetic requirements. So just a recap of a summary of all the things we have learned. Um, considerable wall proximal caries, incisal ledge reasonably intact, endodontically treated teeth with post and core favorable distribution of occlusal load. Contraindicating when superior strength is warranted and uh yeah metal ceramic crown is more appropriate okay high caries index insufficient coronal tooth structure for support thin teeth facio-lingually unfavorable distribution of load bruxism okay um advantages aesthetically 
unsurpassed. Excellent. Yeah. Good tissue response, subgingival margins can be given slightly more conservative on a facial wall than metal serum. Only on the facial, right? <laughs> okay. Disadvantage reduced strength in comparison to metal ceramic crown proper preparation extremely crucial um it's the least conservative preparation because it prepares a lot brittle nature of material and it can only be used uh it can be used only as single restoration okay. right preparation steps same depth groups guys tapered diamond tapered diamond usually all tapered diamond um then incisor reduction, depth groups in the facial, then facial reduction, depth groups on the lingual surface, depth groups on the cingulum surface, lingual shoulder preparation, finishing. Okay, so basically the clearance of 1.5, facial is 1.2, um, 1 mm width of the shoulder. Okay, that's what we supposed Okay, so coming to the ceramic failures, so now we can divide it again into our tooth preparation by biomechanics so mechanical failure right fracture of the abutment right so sometimes the abutment would fracture right and uh, this would cause a problem guys there can be chipping or fracture of ceramic right um once there are chipping or fracture of ceramic um it really cannot be restored back you'll have to replace the crown. Deep bonding, sometimes if you do not follow the proper principles of bonding, um, biological failure, post-operative sensitivity, if you have seen the margin being exposed and you know, not preparing well, then marginal micro leakage, because of the sensitivity, you have marginal leakage. Or you can say vice versa, guys, okay? Okay. Aesthetic failure, poor shade selection, visible margins, Poor camouflaged, discolored teeth. Sometimes you do not camouflage it properly. Okay. Tooth preparation principles, tooth, tooth preparation errors. Yeah. Uh, so sharp line angles, um, again, would lead to fracture. Margin should be, uh, margins cannot be rough and uneven. It has to be proper, right? Overshortening of the preparation. So you have not given adequate strength to the surface. Inadequate preparation of axial walls, excess taper of the prepared tooth, overreduction of tooth structure, inadequate occlusal reduction, lack of uniform, anatomic reduction. So guys, indirectly you have to follow all, all the tooth preparation principles, which I'm not going to go through. We have already covered it. You can refer back to that seminar and find out about the principles of tooth preparation that we are following here, right? So basically, keep everything intact and we'll not have common errors, guys, okay? So here's the bibliography. Rosen, Steele, and Schindelberg are the standard textbooks and it remains the same. Thank you for patient listening. For any further questions, you can come and see me, right? Thank you.